guys, thank you so much for joining me in another video. So as you can tell based on the title, today we are talking about the creative directors and the fashion designers that have studied under Phoebe Philo. The more I did research on this video, the more I really realized how long this list could really be. I'm just gonna specify two designers that have lead creative director roles at brands because there are designers that are like head women's footwear or something like that. There's many people that have studied under her that hold these positions. Maybe that could be another video. We'll start with these designers. Some of them you may know, but some of them you may not. The first designer I wanna talk about when Bottega Veneta had its whole rebrand and it was New Bottega or Bottega Veneta by Daniel Lee. I think Daniel Lee has arguably been one of the most celebrated of designers of recent memory. Daniel Lee was a ready to wear director at Celine. He's also had experience working at Balenciaga and Maison Margiela, but it was June 2018 he was announced as the new creative director. Now, this Italian fashion house known for its entracciato, its leather goods. It was one of these brands that wasn't really associated with being young, sort of appealed to an older audience, an older demographic. But I think what he did was he really redefined the silhouettes of this brand, used a lot of bold colors. It was very fiercely modern, but also very wearable at the same time. During the pandemic years, he really established the influencer wardrobe. And since he's left Bottega Veneta, he's now at Burberry. Will his ability to transform Bottega Veneta, will it follow through at Burberry? So the second designer I wanna talk about is Matthew Blasey. So he was sort of the second in command, at least when Daniel Lee was at Bottega Veneta. And just a little bit about him, he is someone that has had like a lot of experience. He interned under Nicolas Gesquier at Balenciaga. Right after that, he also studied under John Galliano. And then later he would also be at Maison Bargella. He's also worked under Ralph Simmons. And he was often described as the most famous designer you've never heard of by Susie Menkes. And then in 2014, Matthew Blasey was at Celine. Shortly after in 2016, he returned to work for Ralph Simmons at Calvin Klein. He's definitely a designer that has had a lot of experience and is taking Bottega Veneta after Daniel Lee. And while we are not seeing a lot of the same bold, bright colors that we saw with Daniel Lee, I think he's taking a bit more of an intellectual approach to his fashion. What Matthew Blasey's done is he's gone back to the smaller weaves, the more muted color palettes, the sort of appreciation for the craft of leather and the ability for leather to be transformed in clothing with the iconic denim transforming leather into what looks like denim, but is actually leather. So the transformative nature of leather, I think is very much a theme with Matthew Blasey's work. Sure, it's not as like bright and bold as Daniel Lee. It's a little bit more subdued, but I think it appeals to that mature audience. I definitely feel like is one of the designers that is leading the way with this quiet luxury aesthetic we are seeing. Another designer I wanna talk about is Peter Doe. He graduated from the Fashion Institute of Technology. He's a New York based designer. He also won the LVMH prize, was recruited to work for Phoebe Philo Celine before launching his own brand in 2018. A lot of his collections focus on very clean lines, deconstructed and reconstructed tailoring. You see a lot of like beautiful like, asymmetry and pleats. And there's this undertone of this like New York like grit, this kind of like industrial feel, but there's also a love for like craft and beautiful clean lines. There's almost this like sexy undertone. I don't know if it's like sexy is the right word, but there's almost this like powerful undertone to a lot of his works, but there's also elegance at the same same time. And it was recently announced that he would be now taking over Helmut Lang as the creative director there as well. Definitely a young designer to watch. I'm definitely interested in following his work. The next designer I want to talk about is Nadej Venhi Sibulski. I do apologize if I mispronounce this name, but she's a French fashion designer and who is currently the creative director at Hermes. And she's someone that studied at the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Antwerp. She was a design director at The Row and also worked at Celine under Phoebe Philo as well as Maison Margiela. And while like Hermes is not a brand I necessarily look at the ready to wear first, like I think it's like we all know of it as this brand that is known for its leather goods, its handbags, but like let's be real guys, like to get offered a lot of these things you have to buy from every category. So it is something that people actually do buy to get offered bags considering the fact that she's also worked at Margiela. You know Margiela himself was a creative director at Hermes but she's also worked under Phoebe Philo Celine. I think her background, it's very much on brand for Hermes. There's something very like practical, but also like the 
this emphasis on very expensive materials, cashmere, and beautiful silks. And I found this quote from the CEO, Axel Dumas, when discussing her appointment. We discussed the creative process and Plato's cave, but I knew I wanted to work with her as she had three important qualities, a real appreciation and understanding for craftsmanship, which is paramount for me because I like to talk shoulders and buttonholes. She had a modern and empowering vision for women, and she was able to work in a collaborative, creative environment. So the next designer I want to talk about is probably a designer you may or may not know of. It's the designer Rock. He's a Korean-American designer who grew up in Austin, Texas, but is now based in London. He was actually recruited to work at Celine in 2010 after he won the L'Oreal Professional Creative Award when he was at Central St. Martin's for his master's graduate collection. Rock Huang spent three years working for Phoebe Philo, and he says this about working with her. Phoebe really helped me to define how to cut or fit a garment and taught me to perfect everything I make. That has been a real life-changing experience for me. And then in 2013, he started working out on his own. He was a freelance designer. He's also worked for Chloe and Louis Vuitton before establishing his own label in 2016. He was also an LVMH finalist in 2018 and took home a special prize. Another brand I wanna talk about is Huaidan Editions. So this is led by a duo, Leah Dickley and Hung La, and they both met while studying at the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Antwerp. And the two have been together for 14 years. They do have like a long resume together. La also worked at Balenciaga under Nicolas Gesquier and then joined Phoebe Philo at Celine. And Dickley has also worked for Alexander McQueen, Balma, and Rick Owens. Together with their experience, they decided they would open up their own brand. And you definitely see like they use a lot of prints and patterns, beautifully cut clothing in more expressive ways. Like I wouldn't call this very like minimalist looking clothing the way, you know, when you see a brand like Peter Doe is like very like clean lines like this to me, it's, it's a little bit more playful. It's a little bit more expressive, like sort of Phoebe Philo's more expressive years at Celine. I definitely see that in their collections. And the next designer I want to talk about is Veronica Leone of Kira. Her aesthetic is very minimal, very much in line with the Jill Sander, Phoebe Philo at Celine, The Row. Like she's worked for these designers and it definitely comes through in her work. She's also worked for Montclair and you definitely see this like interest in outerwear. And we see in her works, she sort of challenges contemporary feminism Femininity. This is something you definitely have seen in a lot of Phoebe Philo's old Celine collections. But there's also this like deep interest in Italian tailoring. The inspiration for her name is named after her grandmother who was an Italian seamstress. For instance, she'll use a conventionally like masculine strong shouldered jacket, but it was cut in a spiral shape so that you could accommodate the hips of a woman. And the next designer I wanna talk about actually came from the Chloe years, Valeska Dutch. She's the creative director of the brand Belize. She's co-directing this brand with Fiona Bensal, who worked at Stella McCartney. And you really do feel that more like casual, chic, kind of effortless approach to fashion with this brand. To me, Chloe kind of has this relaxed, casual, carefree attitude, and you definitely feel that same vibe and energy. It's very interesting to me. We always think of Phoebe Philo for the most part, right? For the most part at Celine, her tenure at Celine. Maybe it's just because it's more recently that we relate to lead to Phoebe Philo, but she really did establish herself at Chloe. And I think that relaxed, casual, carefree attitude that we see in many Celine collections, you definitely see that in Chloe as well. And in conclusion, like I said, I honestly could have made this list even longer. There are so many designers at sort of these roles, like accessories designer, women's wear designer that have studied under Phoebe Philo and that are very talented designers. There are a lot of designers we don't really know about. I think in this age of celebrity designers, even just a lot of these designers to this day, they kind of become celebrities in their own way. It's very important to recognize a lot of them have these very talented design teams behind them. What has made Phoebe Philo successful is obviously she's a very talented designer herself, but it's her ability to have these very talented teams, to cultivate these teams of really talented people. It's something that's very collaborative. There's so many parts and pieces. This is just the design here that we're talking about, right? Like there's the way a brand is marketed. There's the whole 
creative aspect behind that and even just like the business aspect you have to have a good business game anyway so that's my video i honestly could have made this much longer but you know we're competing with tiktok and trying to make videos digestible health but yeah i hope to talk about topics like this i feel like this video isn't going to get a whole lot of views but i like to talk about this kind of content anyways thank you so much for joining and i really appreciate you watching and i hope to see you in the next one bye What? <laughs>